Yo Atlas speaking and welcome back to the Atlas Fanfix channel the go to fanfiction channel on YouTube. Today I'm back with part 4 of what if I was reborn in Naruto as a prodigy half Hyuga and Kagaya. You all seem to be enjoying the story so far as it seems, currently it's my most viewed series and for that I thank you. The playlist is linked above and with that being said let the tale begin. Chapter 19 I was three months into making the strength of a hundred seal and a year out of the academy. Things were going well, I spent plenty of time with my mom, Duwei, and Guy. And my training was going well. But my latest foray into medical ninjutsu had met with great success. I had diverted a little chakra that was meant for the seal and used it to run the diagnostic jutsu on different people. People like Kushina and myself with healing factors have an abundance of stem cells that are responsible for the regeneration of any injury that occurs. Normal people still have stem cells but to a much lesser extent than Kushina and I. I believe that as long as my stem cells can continue to divide and replace any of my dying cells, I'll probably never die. Your cells could only divide a certain amount of times before they die, that's essentially what aging is. As long as I have stem cells available my body won't deteriorate in the same way a normal body would with aging. So, I had an exciting thought, could I become biologically immortal if I found a way to keep my stem cells young? I remembered something from my old world. People were injecting stem cells into injured areas to heal the injury quickly. Mainly because their body's natural cells didn't divide enough to heal the injury by itself, so, the introduction of new cells speeds up healing as they have a higher capacity to divide. My body could be as young as my stem cells. Could I introduce younger stem cells into my body and slow or halt my aging by replacing my old cells with young cells? What if I lost my healing factor or my chakra changed with the introduction of new cells? I had high hopes that it wouldn't be the case. I'd be able to experiment more when my chakra was not being used to make the seal, as it was my use of the diagnostic jutsu was the limit of what I could do. Stem cells might be the answer to biological immortality. It'd take a lot of stem cells to remake a whole body. I might have to become a stem cell vampire to live forever. My training continued, I did some much needed stealth training and spent a good amount of time learning Kanoha's sign language. I was currently eating dinner with my mom when she gave me an unexpected offer. Shiro, when you rejoin the active shinobi forces are you interested in apprenticing under me? I blinked at her offer. Sorry, but I don't know what exactly you do. Was she a frontline fighter? A medic of some sort? A scout? I specialize in hunting and tracking. Meaning she hunted slash chased missing mean which sounded better than escort and guard missions. Are you an umbu? I knew Mist had Hunter Neen. But did Kanoha? My question cracked her up and she snorted. No, I wouldn't have had a Jin and team if I was in the umbu. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. I'd like to know more about what you do before I decide. I've got plenty of time anyway. She nodded. That you do, Shiro. That you do. We went back to our meal. I was sitting on my bed staring at my notepad of possible experiments. It was written in a mix of French and half-remembered English. I had quite a few ideas, most of the ideas were good, but all of them were poorly planned. I was an idea guy, planning wasn't my strong suit. Stem cell vampire. Replacing aging cells with young stem cells possibly restoring youth. Pros. Biological immortality. Cons, not needed for a long time, need ways to store accumulated stem cells, possible cell rejection, could change body slash chakra, could affect healing factor, expensive chakra and time-wise. Super cool bone weapons. Using stem cells to make bone weapons with my already impressive bones. Pros, stabby stabby, cheap chakra conductive weapons, weapons easy to repair, biodegradable. Cons, chakra expensive, uses lots of stem cells thus shortens life expectancy a bit, can only make kanai shuriken and senban unless new weapon skills are learned. Super Cool Bone Weapons Part 2 Making Super Cool Hidden Bone Weapons in My Body Pros, 
can be my cool hidden move, possible wolverine claws, can use wolverine claws to extract stem cells, stabby stem cell vampire. Cons, must alter hand and body anatomy for claws, possible pain, no automatic sheathing of weapons, must learn to fight with hand claws. Biological absorption. An ability used by a transformed Hugo. Hugo absorbs chakra and flesh and uses it to restore himself. Pros, cockroach, harder to kill, a possible improvement to stem cell vampire. Cons, no idea where to start. Human chakra batteries. Tsunade can transfer chakra from her seal to allies. Can I do the reverse and steal chakra from enemies? Pros, more chakra, possible way to introduce Atsutsuki chakra into my Byakugan. Cons, the enemy must be unconscious and unable to fight back. Deadpool immortality. Cancer cells have unlimited division potential and are immortal. Pros, immortality, Deadpool. Cons, looking like Deadpool, the possibility of becoming a giant tumor, very likely to go wrong. The brain and intelligence. The brains of some people just seem to work more efficiently. What makes their brains different? And can I do the same to myself? Pros, increased intelligence slash cognitive ability. Cons, possible brain injury, have to scan many brains, possibility of making test subjects smarter and thus dangerous. Tail beast immortality. Can I turn myself into a chakra construct? Pros, immortality. Cons, easy to seal, far-fetched idea, no idea where to start, can be eaten by an Atsutsuki. Flexibility. Orochimaru is seen to have snake-like flexibility with the same benefit me? Pros? Cons, Orochimaru comparisons, Taijutsu will have to be adjusted. Removing fingerprints. It's both extremely easy and relatively painless to remove fingerprints with medical ninjutsu. Pros, I leave no fingerprints? Cons, might not be necessary, never seen fingerprints used for anything in Naruto verse. Atsutsuki limb slash flesh graft. Madara had Hashirama's cells grafted onto himself giving him wood release. Could I do the same with Atsutsuki cells? Pros, possible path to the Tensigen. Cons, no Atsutsuki until after Kagaya, I might have to take a chance and go for Kagaya's cells. My ideas were listed according to how much I liked the idea, with stem cell vampire being my favorite and somehow getting Atsutsuki flesh being my least favorite. The ideas were all cool and theoretically possible. As all good ideas should be. Sadly, they were just that. Ideas. And ideas they would remain until I had access to my chakra. Which wouldn't be for around three more months. I was dying of boredom. I was now trying to kill my boredom with the power of youth. Guy and I were currently running around Kanoha trying to build endurance. My endurance was supported by my healing factor most of the time, but because of my shortage of chakra, I was lagging behind my youthful friend. Which was unacceptable. I must fan my flames of youth. My most youthful friend Shiro, I thought you said you were behaving unyouthfully. That was a most excellent display of youth. Indeed, it was. I reached deep inside myself and found a hidden well of youthful enthusiasm and used it to fan my flames of youth. Guy laughed. Ha ha ha. That's the spurt, Shiro. We will never be young like this again, let's not waste our springtime of youth. Guy did his new nice guy pose, a thumbs up, wink, and a winning smile. Guy your nice guy pose has gotten more youthful. I feel like I'm falling behind but I'm happy knowing that it's you who's surpassed me in youthfulness. I gave my nice guy pose even though it now felt lackluster compared to Guy's. Shiro, how youthful. Guy had a broad grin even though he was crying a river of tears. Shiro, do you know what gender is? Indeed, I do. Yes? My mom managed to look both annoyed and amused. Why do you keep crossing out male and female and writing evil as your gender? For my amusement, of course. It's because I am not male nor female. I am evil. I struck a pose, 
one hand on my hip the other twirling an imaginary mustache. The silence was as painful as it was delicious, and the disapproving gaze sent my way only fueled my desire for more shenanigans. Although you made some paperwork ninja laugh, you've also annoyed them. Not my problem. I'm sorry to hear that. What do they want me to do? She blew a large breath out of her mouth. They just want you to fill out the forms correctly in the future. That's not going to happen. Sure, no problem. I'll change my ways. My mother shook her head and left the room. But little did she know. Evil couldn't be stopped by mere words. I looked at my calligraphy from three months ago and compared it to what I had done today. Man, my calligraphy practice had been going well. And by going well I mean that my writing was no longer chicken scratch. It was still unusable for few in jutsu, but at least there was visible progress. I decided that was enough calligraphy for today, so I packed up my writing supplies and set off to the dining room. Mom was seated at the shibudai and enjoying some tea. I think this is how she relaxes. Well, here comes a difficult topic. So, I wanted to talk about this apprenticeship. She hummed but didn't say anything, she just kept sipping her tea. Alrighty. I wanted to ask you if you were interested in taking another gin and team. The grimace I got in response told me how she felt about it. I decided I'd take a step back and go from there. If you're not interested, that's fine. I needed some friends and future allies, as I had very little social skills, teammates were ideal. Though if my mother wasn't interested, that was fine, I'd respect her wishes. Sorry, Shiro. I'm not ready for another gin and team. She looked tense and upset. That's fine. No worries. I was thinking of ways to make friends and thought teammates were the ideal friends. She blew a breath out of her nose and some of the tension left her body. It would be hard to make friends with a team who had just lost a member, so you wanted to create a new team. She guessed my thoughts, for the most part, I also thought that by training them myself we could create a strong bond. I had tried to make friends in my academy days. But who knew making friends was so hard? Yes, that was exactly my thought, but if it makes you unhappy that's fine. You being comfortable and happy is more important than any potential friends I may make. There were always other opportunities, I'd rather wait than cause mom any grief. Mom relaxed further. Sigh. Any potential teammates would be older than you as well, even if I took a gin and team I don't think you would have much luck making friends with kids 3 plus years older than you. Yes, something I hadn't considered. Age. I keep thinking I'm older than I am. That's something I didn't think about. Though I should have. Thanks mom, sorry for upsetting you. I walked over and gave her a hug from behind. She stiffened but then relaxed. It's all right, Shiro. I'm just not ready for a gin and team. That's fine. No worries. I'd rather have some time with just the two of us anyways. No need for any cannon fodder to die and cause mom grief. Let's register for an apprenticeship then. Yes, let's. Sounds good. Though I wouldn't be making friends via teamwork, that was fine. Maybe I'd find another way. I was sitting in my room, curled up in my blankets, and fantasizing about bone weapons. I wanted wolverine claws. My main problem was the retracting and extending of the claws. It could probably be done with chakra. So maybe it wasn't much of an issue. I didn't want to have the claws extend from the knuckles, as that involved a lot of anatomy changes. So, claws from the wrists or backhand. But how do I stop them from being ripped from my hands upon contact with something hard? After all it would only be a thin layer of flesh and muscle holding them there. Unless I somehow made them part of the tibia or fibula. Then again, they shouldn't get caught on anything if they are used carefully. They would only be used as a last resort. Wait are they still wolverine claws if they don't come from the knuckles? Whatever. There was also the matter of inviting foreign matter into my body via claws. I after all didn't want someone's blood being brought into my body. Though perhaps my immune system would take care of it. 
Maybe I'll just stick with making some sort of bone blade within my forearm. A hidden weapon that I can pull out when I need it. Hmm. Hidden weapons in the thighs and forearms. That might be the way to go. I guess it depends on how fast I can make bone weapons. If it's fast enough, I might just pull my spine out and use it as a sword, like the original Shikatsu Miyaku. If it's too slow, then hidden bone weapons are the way to go. I'm so bored I've started rhyming. Is this why more people don't learn the strength of a hundred seal? Near crippling boredom. I flip my pillow to get to the cool side. That's the good stuff. I wonder if there's anyone who doesn't flip their pillow over. If there are, they're filthy savages. I don't think I can be friends with someone who doesn't flip their pillow over. Who would hate themselves enough to not flip their pillow over? Child molesters. Yes, if you don't flip your pillow over, you're a child molester and you're punishing yourself for past transgressions. My logic is sound. Chapter 20 I was staring at the purple rhombus-shaped seal on my forehead. Using Kushina's bucket analogy. The strength of a hundred seal is like a bucket. You fill it with your excess chakra when you aren't using it and pour it out when you need it. Pouring it out doesn't break the bucket, it only empties it. It was a lovely seal. But it also stuck out on my forehead like a sore thumb. I had to cover it. Either with my hair or forehead protector. Though. At least there was no caged bird seal on my forehead. He he he. I couldn't stop myself and giggled like a little girl. I couldn't describe the amount of joy I was feeling. This seal made surviving so much easier. The reason most high-level ninjas die is that they run out of chakra. With my new seal that was now somewhat unlikely. With my healing factor I was near inexhaustible and extremely hard to kill. I started to do a little dance, my joy couldn't be contained. My mother of course chose that moment to stick her head in. I saw her, stopped dancing, then made a contact. Awkward but not awkward enough to extinguish my joy. I extended a hand. Dance with me. She promptly disappeared faster than I could see, demonstrating why she was considered a jonin. Fine. I didn't need any company anyways. I resumed my dance. All right, that's enough. I stopped dancing and returned to the mirror. Having my chakra running free in my body made me feel giddy. I couldn't stop smiling. Finally, life would speed up again and things were looking good. I spent a week getting back into the swing of things. I was once again using chakra strings as much as possible and sending any extra chakra I had into my seal before I went to bed. I figured that whenever I had the opportunity, I should exhaust my chakra by storing it all in the seal before I go to bed. So that's what I did almost every day before I went to bed. Today was different though. Mom and I had applied for the apprenticeship, now all we needed was approval from the Hokage. That would hopefully come with some political pressure from the Hyuga elders. They had wanted me with Takuma, so maybe they would settle for my mother instead. The elders haven't caused me problems yet. Though who knew, they could use this opportunity to annoy me. Anyway, we were eating at a restaurant to celebrate my success with the seal. I would have rather done it at home, but mom looked excited at the idea of eating out so I let it be. I now regretted that decision as seated two tables away from us was Minato and Kakashi. And they had noticed us. I turned my head pretending I didn't see anything, hoping they would do the same. They, of course, did not, Kakashi and Minato approached our table. Shiro! It's been a while. Oh boy! Conversation. Yes, it has. Minato and Kakashi looked the same as when I had last seen them. I jetted my thumb towards my mom. This is my mom, Sumiko Hyuga. She nodded. Mom, these are my ex-teammates, Kakashi and Minato. Minato returned the nod. Things were quiet after the introduction, I had no plans on making small talk so I stayed quiet hoping this awkwardness would hasten their departure. Minato broke the silence. So, 
What have you been up to Shiro? He probably wanted to know about my progress on my seal. Oh, I've just been reading and practicing my taijutsu. And training with Guy as well. How far are you along on the strength of a hundred seal? Minato usually wasn't this blunt. I've completed it. Minato looked impressed. That's quite the feat. Thanks. Yes, it was quite hard. I understand why more people don't learn the seal. No need for modesty here. I am awesome after all. Hmm, what are your plans for the future? To become immortal, awaken the Tensegan, and possibly leave this universe. I'm going to apprentice under my mother. Hopefully. Hmm, well good luck Shiro, will not disturb your meal further. I wish you hadn't disturbed my meal at all. I had spent a week trying to create the Raisingan. Though my Raisingan creation time was cut short when news came that my apprenticeship was approved. Now I would be doing missions and training under my mother. Which sounded fun, as I was tired of escorting merchants and guarding nobles and rich folk. That seemed to be all I did with Minato. I was waiting in the kitchen for my mother to pick up our first mission together. I had declined to go to the Hokage Tower in favor of getting 15 more minutes of Raisingan practice. I was so close I could taste it. Wait. Clones. Right. I sent two clones off to the third training grounds to practice. I think I'll have the Raisingan down sometime today. My mom arrived with the mission scroll. Today we're doing a B-rank mission, we're hunting a Kiri missing Nin by the name of Sato Mitsuharu, otherwise known as Hidden Miss Sato. I raised an eyebrow. A B-rank mission right away? I was alright with it, but I wanted to hear her thoughts. There's no need to waste time chasing academy dropouts, I'm doing this so you can get some experience. Alright. How strong is he? And why does he have a cool nickname? I wanted a cool nickname. He's Haichunin level and uses the Hidden Mist Jutsu to hide from opponents. So, Sato of the Hidden Mist because he uses the Hidden Mist Jutsu. So, we were sent because of our Byakugan? Nice. Alrighty, where are we headed today? Hopefully it wouldn't be a long trip. We're headed to Nagi Island. Fuck! I jinxed myself. That was even further than the land of tea. This was at minimum a seven-day mission. We were packed and ready to go. The only change to my usual packing was some chakra restraints and a seal that kept your target unconscious. We were supposed to capture the runaway and bring him in alive for interrogation and the most bounty money. Of course, we were supposed to do it before any missed hunter Neen got him. I'm not sure I like the sound of this mission. I think I would have preferred chasing some academy graduates. I dispersed my clones as I left the house. They didn't complete the raisin again. Whatever. We were three days into our trip and we were about to reach the border of the land of noodles. So, how are we getting to Nagi Island? I hope we weren't water walking there. We are traveling east through the land of noodles and then we'll take a boat from noodles to Nagi Island. Fuck that was close to Kiri. Why are we getting so close to Kiri? I was starting to get a little anxious. There was a good chance we would run into Kiri ninja that weren't our target. It's the shortest route and I want you to fight any Kiri ninja we encounter. Well, I didn't want to fight any Kiri ninja we encounter. If we fight them we can't let them live then. I don't want a bounty yet. My mom snorted at me. A bounty is exactly what you need. I didn't agree but didn't say anything. I'd rather hear her explanation first. It's a good opportunity to establish yourself as valuable to the village and maybe get your lab. But also, a good opportunity for some Kirinin to bathe in my blood. I sighed. I didn't want to a bounty yet. But I trusted my mom's experience and wisdom. So, I changed the subject. What's the range of your Byakugan? She blinked at the abrupt change in topic but answered regardless. Around five kilometers. What? Holy shit! How did you increase your range so much? My range was currently at around 200 meters. 
meaning she had around 25 times the range I currently had. The more you use the Byakugan, the more range you have access to. Range varies between people, though most Byakugan users' range doesn't go beyond 1 kilometer. I was proud of my measly 200 meters when my mom had a range that I couldn't even imagine. And a kilometer was probably my future limit. Unless I could run some scans on some Hugas to figure out what made their range so much better. I side-eyed my mom. I had an ideal subject. How do you feel about letting me scan your Byakugan? I wondered what made her Byakugan so different from mine. I'm fine with it as long as it's just a scan. Meaning don't mess with my Byakugan and you can scan it. Nice. Thanks, Mom. We were well into Noodle Country and looking for a boat to board. Mom was using her Byakugan to look and I was twiddling my thumbs and feeling rather useless. After a few minutes of looking my mom found one. All right, follow me. We're going to sneak onto a ship. We're not paying? All righty. We were hiding in a crew member's room on the ship. I figured we'd hide and be sneaky. But no mom just put the guy in a jinjutsu and took over his room. The guy whose room we took was hard at work. I was using my Byakugan to look at how the jinjutsu was affecting his brain. A lot was going on in his brain. I couldn't believe a few hand seals could affect a brain like this. I decided that I'd look into it another day. I deactivated my Byakugan and settled in for a half a day long trip. Eventually we got close to Nagi Island. Mom and I ran the rest of the way to the island to avoid getting spotted at the port. We were now on land. Now, all we had to do was find this guy. Mom, do you have a picture of the guy? She nodded, reached into her pack, and pulled out a bingo book. After flipping through it for a few seconds she handed it to me. The man had brown hair and eyes, the only thing of note was his height at 187 centimeters. He was a water release user as well. So where are we looking? I hope we didn't have to search the whole island for him. To the south, there's a small separate 50 kilometer wide island, that's where we're going to search for Sato. Nice. It took the rest of the day to get to the small island. Which didn't feel small now that I was standing on it. So, what now? Do we split up and search the island? Stick with me, I'll look for our target and you'll engage. So, look pretty and wait for my turn? Sounds good. It had turned dark in the time it took us to find our target. We got closer so I could watch him from within my Byakugan's range. He was seated at a fire and cooking some meat, likely his meal. His face looked just like his bingo book and notably he had the physique of a newborn giraffe. Lanky and tall. I was about 120 centimeters to his 187 centimeters. So, take out the legs and then disable him? Yep. That's the plan. Plan made, I activated Chikaku no Kyoka, deactivated my gravity seal, and slowed my perception slightly. I started making my way towards him, I took note that he had some explosive notes in his pouch. I focused on my pouch. It just so happened that I lacked explosive notes. How kind of Sato to bring some. I was about a hundred meters from Sato when he abruptly turned and looked directly at me. I blinked in surprise. There was no way he saw me through the trees. So, he's probably a sensor. Sato ran through three hand signs and shouted. Water release, hiding in mist technique. He proceeded to blow a thick mist from his mouth. Alrighty. I continued my approach while keeping an eye on Sato and jumped directly into the mist. Fool! You've jumped directly into my trap. I didn't say anything, I just got into a stance and continued to watch him as he circled. Eventually he got within 10 meters and shouted. Water release, mouth shot. I heard his voice come from behind, even though I could see Sato in front of me. Neat. I watched a sinbon shaped needle of water form on his mouth, which he launched directly at my head. I sidestepped it and waited for his next move. Sato continued circling and started to shot another water sinbon at my back. Water release, mouth shot. 
As soon as the water Sinbon left his mouth, I shun shine behind him, sending a kick to the back of his knee. Sato dodged and jumped away to create some distance. I, however, was not having it and stuck to Sato like glue sending repeated kicks at his legs. Sato, seeing that he couldn't disappear into the mist, brought out a kunai and turned to engage me. Die, kid! I brought out one of my kunai and we engaged in a clash of blades. We clashed a few more times before I palmed a second kunai and tossed it at his gut. He sidestepped the kunai and I took the time to shun shin to him while aiming a one for all enhanced kick at his knee. Sato tried to block my kick with his own. That was a mistake. Crack asterisk. Fuuk. He toppled over and tried to drag himself backwards using his arms. Another shun shin and a punch to the back of his head and he was down for the count. I jabbed him in the elbows with some gentle fist strikes just to be sure. And the fight was over, I quickly scanned my surroundings before deactivating Chikaku no Kyoka and my Byakugan. I blew a breath out of my mouth and smiled. I enjoyed that fight. I grabbed the chakra restraints and put them onto his wrists before slapping the sleeping seal onto his forehead. Job done, I started to pilfer his kunai pouch for those explosive seals. I turned around and saw my mother leaning against a tree giving me a touch of a smile. What? Her smile widened a bit. It's fine if you steal from a defeated enemy just don't steal from the dead. I wish I had known that earlier. Perhaps that was another reason Minato didn't like me. Okay. My mother picked up Sato, threw him over her shoulder, and started making her way to his camp where I figured we'd stay for the night. We arrived at the camp. I took the slightly burnt meat from the fire and took a bite. Hmm, rabbit. Want some? I waved the skewered meat at my mother. Yes, please. Sato was set against a tree, and my mother joined me at the fire. I snapped the makeshift skewer in half and gave my mother the bigger half. We both sat and enjoyed our meal. Shiro. What? Hmm. My mother bit her lip before responding. I don't know how to say it nicely, but you need to improve your gentle fist. I wouldn't know how to say it nicely either. No worries. How should I improve it? I'm doing exactly what Takuma taught me. I burned it into my mind with Kokoro no Kyoka so it was exactly as I was taught. Skilled gentle fist users can disable their chakra flow by hitting their Tenketsu, I only saw you using the gentle fist to destroy his muscles. That was the point. I can hit the Tenketsu, but I only go for them when I'm using one of the 8 trigrams techniques. Hitting Tenketsu was only useful when done more than a few times, and it was far easier to cripple my opponent so I usually didn't bother with trying to hit their Tenkatsu. Well, don't cripple your opponent when they're already down, it makes you look cruel. What's it matter if he's crippled? He's a dead man walking. All right. So, don't steal from the dead or cripple already downed opponents. I'm learning a lot on this mission. Chapter 21 I woke up to see my mother sitting by the fire and roasting some meat. I made my way over and joined her. So, how are we getting Sato back to Kanoha without him dying of dehydration? I assumed we'd wake him and make him eat, but this was the Naruto verse, so who knew? Maybe his chakra will let him last until we get to Kanoha? I'll give him some water now and then. Okie dokie. Sounds good. Now all I had to do was hope we didn't run into any ninja that I'd have to fight. We were back on Nagi's main island approaching the area we first arrived at and I was enjoying my trip thus far. I was using my tongue to play with my loose front tooth. It was the first of many as children didn't stop losing them until around 12. Which sucked. I was thinking about how goofy I'd look with half my baby teeth and half my adult teeth when my mother interrupted my thoughts. There's some kirinine at the port. That's great and all, but I wanted nothing to do with them. There are too many people at the port, I'd rather not have a public fight. Mom nodded. Do you want to wait and see if they leave the port? No, I don't. No thanks. Mom raised an eyebrow but nodded. All right, it looks like we're running to the land of noodles then. 
That sucks. It was around midnight when we arrived at the shore of the land of noodles. I was well and truly tired, and my mom looked a little annoyed. Are we stopping here or are we continuing further inland? It didn't matter, but I hope to sleep on a bed. We're going along the shore. Great! We traveled for a little longer before we came across a small town near the edge of the water. It was nothing marvelous, they looked to be simple peasants. I still want a bed to sleep on regardless of how crappy it was. So, what's the plan? Are we going to wake them and ask for a place to sleep? We'll use Jinjutsu and steal a bed for a few hours of sleep. A little amoral, but I like the idea. Sounds good. It seems my mother is also a bit apathetic towards other people. My mother woke me up before the sun had risen. We silently moved the middle-aged couple back onto their bed. Mom picked up Sato and made her way to the entrance. I followed after her. I took a wad of cash out of my kunai pouch, separated a few bills, and left them on the table as I passed. We made our way to Kanoha over the next three days. Our trip was eight days long. As I walked through the gates, I decided that I'd never voluntarily do a mission that was longer than four days. My mom had vanished the moment we got through the gate, saying that she couldn't walk around with a body on her shoulder. I shunned Shine home eager for a shower. Shower done with, I looked at the clock on the wall. I had eight hours of daylight left. I sighed and made three clones, then sent them off to the third training ground to complete the raisin again, either together or separately I cared not. I walked to the kitchen, I decided that I'd make something for my mom and me. My clones dispersed returning very little chakra but signaling the completion of the raisin again. I held my hand out, palm up, and started using the raisin again. I formed a thin sphere of chakra, then spun my chakra in multiple directions. Finally, I slowly increased the volume and density of the chakra I was outputting. I looked at the small raisin dian in my palm. It worked fine, but it took too long to form it currently. Though that didn't matter as my speed in forming the technique would come with familiarity and practice. I increased my chakra output and increased the size of my raisin dian. I now had a basketball-sized raisin gun swirling on my palm. And nowhere to put it. I shouldn't have done this inside. And while I was cooking nonetheless. I took the food off the burner and made my way outside, basketball-sized raisin gun on my palm. I stood in our backyard looking at our nice flowers and grass and decided that it wasn't a good idea to use it here. I shunshined to the third training ground. I arrived at the training ground slightly annoyed. I smashed my raisin gun into the first tree I saw and let it go. I jumped back and watched my raisin gun drill through a tree before dispersing and leaving a spiral-shaped mark on a second tree. Crash asterisk. The first tree fell the ground. And with the death of the tree, I felt less annoyed than when I first got here. I ran a hand through my hair while admiring the damage. I liked the raisin gun. I planned to claim the creation of it to spite Minato. But it was what won Naruto almost all of his future battles so I definitely shouldn't do it. I had to choose between our savior not having his signature jutsu and being petty and taking away one of Minato's future achievements. It wasn't a hard decision. I tucked a straight piece of hair behind my ear and sunshined home. My mom arrived a few minutes after I had finished the food and joined me for lunch. I had just finished my meal and mom wasn't far behind. I figured it was the ideal time for a talk. Only this time it wasn't about me. How's your chakra control? My mother raised an eyebrow. I've created a new technique that requires excellent chakra control. I want to know if you can learn it. I technically didn't make the technique, but I wanted it established that I had the technique well before Minato had made it. I didn't want to be accused of stealing from the fourth Hokage after all. And my mother had no unique non huga techniques. I get an alibi and my mom increases her survivability. Win-win. Mom took a few seconds to finish chewing before responding. My chakra control is really good, but nowhere near as good as yours. That was the ideal answer. Good, 
I'm going to teach you a new technique I've just created. I looked at the clock on the wall. Tomorrow. I sent her a nod and put my dishes in the sink and I left towards my room. I woke up feeling excited about what would come, I was happy that I got to teach my mom something. I did my morning routine and walked into the dining room. Mom was occupying her usual spot and sipping tea. Don't go anywhere I'll be back in a little while. I exited the house and sunshine to the market district. I had to get some balloons and rubber balls. My mom and I were at the third training ground. I had filled almost all the balloons with water and I was ready to go. My mom didn't look too interested in what was happening, but that would probably change with a demonstration. Activate your Byakugan and watch. I created a palm-sized raisin gan but decided that it wasn't impressive enough. I held my hand above my head and dumped an eighth of my reserves into the raisin gan. My palm-sized raisin gan became a giant raisin gan. I was nervous, but I tried to keep my face passive. Back up, this is a big one. I heard some movement and decided that it was time to get rid of this disaster waiting to happen. I grabbed the raisin gan with both hands and threw it towards the trees. I watched it drill through four trees before it burst and left a spiral marking on some trees and ground. I looked over to my mom and enjoyed the look of shock on her face. I just finished this yesterday so it isn't combat ready. It was still too slow. You can do that faster? I hope so. Yeah, it's just chakra control, the more familiarity you have, the faster you can do it. At least that was the theory. Now the question was, do I create the Chi Dori as well? That was a thought for later perhaps. Is this based on the clan's eight trigrams, revolving heaven? Nope. Yep. I like it when people jump to conclusions and save me the trouble of lying. What's the technique's name? I don't have one. Heaven's palm? Good enough. Okay, grab a water balloon. You have to spin your chakra in multiple directions at once when you've popped the balloon. Come see me. Oh, yeah. Whatever way your body naturally spins its chakra is the way you start. With that done, I left towards the edge of the training ground. I made two clones and sent them off to practice lightning release. Something had almost slipped my mind. I sat down and took a deep breath. I activated my gravity seal bringing it up to level 3. Again, sitting was a good choice. We were well into the day and it was about time for Guy to get out of school. That means my training for the day is done. I dispersed the clones practicing lightning release. There was little improvement. I looked over to my mother. There were some pieces of rubber on the ground but she was still using the water balloons. I walked closer to her. How's it going? She seemed annoyed. I'm almost there. I'm just having trouble maintaining the rotation. Sadly, the first two steps were the easiest, the last step is the hardest. The next step is increasing the volume and density of your chakra, you must burst the rubber ball to complete this step. I pointed vaguely in the direction of the box of balloons and balls. What you've done is good enough to move on to the rubber balls. The second step was by far the easiest, so it shouldn't take too long. I got a nod in reply and my mother made her way over to the box. Have fun. Alrighty, time to see Guy. I'll grab some food as well. I shunshine to my favorite teriyaki stall. I was seated in the tree in front of the academy. I was pondering the wonders of friendship maintenance and waiting for the bell to ring. To keep a friendship when you're no longer in the same place every day required maintenance, in my case with Guy, I came by and brought him food and asked him how he was doing. If I didn't do this guy would forget about me and move on with his life, probably only thinking about me years later. It was something I learned when I left high school in my past life, those I failed to check in on moved on and we became distant. Those that I did keep in contact with became lifelong friends. I say lifelong friends because I died at 20. I chuckled. They were indeed lifelong friends. Eventually Guy exited the academy with a river of other students. 
I had planned on joining him when he was away from the academy, but he had other plans, it seems. Shiro! Guy was staring directly at me. I gave a little wave. I dropped down from the tree and made my way over to Guy. Hello, Guy! People were staring. Which was exactly what I wanted to avoid. I brought teriyaki. I waved the food around for emphasis. How youthful Shiro! I nodded. Want to climb to the top of the Hokage Monument? I created a shadow clone already anticipating his answer. A most youthful idea, Shiro. Guy raced off towards the monument. I handed the food to the shadow clone and joined him. We were seated on the top of the Hokage Monument and enjoying our now cold teriyaki. Guy? Guy didn't stop eating, but I saw that his eyes were on me, so I continued. Want to learn lightning release from me? Guy hesitated for a moment. No thanks, I've got my hands full with my youthful training. Meaning he didn't have enough time to pursue taijutsu and lightning release. How about the shunshin, it's not too much trouble to learn. It was an easy to learn technique, though it would perhaps take Guy longer with his poor chakra control. Guy just shook his head. No thanks. Alrighty. No worries. All I could do was try, I couldn't force Guy to learn something if he didn't want to. Guy was dedicated to taijutsu. If he didn't want to learn any techniques that was fine, there was other stuff we could do together. Wanna spar? Guy looked excited. A most youthful idea, Shiro. Guy jumped up and took a stance, completely forgetting about his food. Finish your food first. Guy picked his food up and finished it in a second flat. Yash! Let's go! All right. I jumped up and took my stance. I think I'll start using the Academy 3 in our spars, hopefully, it'll help Guy improve. I got home and took my customary shower and got ready for bed. I decided I'd have a quick look around and see how my mother was doing. I went from room to room looking for her, but she was nowhere to be seen. I sighed and created a clone that I sent to the third training ground. I shook my head and went to lay down. How goes it? My mom was still hard at work practicing with the rubber ball. Not well. She had made remarkable progress, I'd say it was going extremely well. No rush, it's a hard technique to master. She had gotten the first two steps down faster than I had. Why don't you come back to it tomorrow, it's getting late. My mom looked at the sky. Sorry, I got distracted. That you did. Have you eaten yet? She shook her head. Let's go see if we can get some street meat. Street meat was code for a prostitute. My mother eyed me. And I fought to keep my face neutral. Yes, let's go get some shioyaki. I nodded in reply. Sounds good. I followed my mom as she shunshined away. Chapter 22 Dawn came and brought with it a new day. Mom had decided that we do one or two missions per month and spend the rest of the time improving ourselves. Which was ideal, as I hated missions with a fiery passion. My mom was already out of the house practicing the raisin again, which put a damper on my plan to study her Byakugan today. I sent a clone out to the third training ground to find her, with no success. So, I had to find another way to occupy my time. I spared a look at the calendar as I passed. My birthday passed and I didn't even realize it. When's my mom's birthday? I flipped through the calendar looking for a hint of some kind with no success. I'll figure it out later. I blew a sigh out my nose. I think it's time I get started on my list of experiments. Let's start with super cool bone weapons. I was seated in my room and trying to create a bone weapon from my finger. I had dulled the nerves in my hand in preparation for my project. It was extremely slow going, it took me two hours to form the bone weapon. It was a sinbon. I created a chakra scalpel on my other hand and cut the bone protruding from me at its base. I pulled the sinbon from my flesh and my finger healed near instantly. I rolled the piece of bone between my fingers, it was heavy. 
I'd probably be able to throw it. I started channeling some lightning chakra down the bone. The lightning spread around the Sinban with no resistance. I rolled it between my fingers again looking for any damage to the bone. Hmm, it looked good. I think it's safe to call super cool bone weapons a success. Though it took forever to create them. And I didn't want to develop calcium deficiency with overuse. So, a partial success. I'd not be pulling my out my spine and using it as a sword, that's for sure. I heard my mom enter the house and I decided that I was done with bone weapons for the day. I stood up and made my way out of my room. Time to look at that Byakugan. Mom, can I look at your eyes now? My mom shook her head. Let me take a shower first. Alrighty. One shower later, my mom was seated at the Shibudai and I was standing behind her, hands on her eyes, and using Tsunade's modified diagnostic jutsu. I had used the time she was in the shower to study my own eyes and renew my familiarity with them. Few things were different when comparing our eyes. Mom's optic nerve was more robust than my own. Other than that our eyes were about the same from what I could tell. The job of the optic nerve is to transfer visual information from the retina to the vision centers of the brain via electrical impulses. So maybe mom's brain got more information from her eyes than my own? I ended my jutsu and withdrew my chakra from her eyes. I was staring at the back of her head blankly lost in thought when my mother interrupted me. Find what you were looking for? Not really. No. Maybe the way she used her chakra in her eye had something to do with her increased range. Activate your Byakugan. I activated my Byakugan and magnified one of her eyes within my vision. Hmm. Deactivate and activate your Byakugan again. I watched her chakra flow through her visual cortex and her brain down her optical nerve and into her eyes. The chakra in her eyes was throughout the eye but was densely gathered around the retina, pupil, and optical disc. The way her chakra concentrated was different than how my own did. And her chakra was much denser than my own as well. She was also running chakra through her visual cortex in an unusual way. It was probably a combination of chakra density, how robust her optical nerve was and the chakra in her visual cortex that caused her immense range. I circulated chakra through my visual cortex to use Chikaku no Kyoka and slow my perception. Hmm. Is this how you always use chakra to activate your Byakugan? She nodded. This required more thought. I might need to figure out how to increase the size of my optical nerve. Stem cells were the answer that automatically appeared in my mind. But I didn't know how the optic nerve formed, so, I guess I'll see. All right, I'm done. I'll let you know if I figure out anything. My mother nodded and stood up. She made her way to the kitchen, probably to make some tea. I called to her as she was leaving. Thanks, Mom. Now I need to add studying eyes slash the optical nerve to my schedule. Maybe I'll need to find some Hugo babies and scan their eyes. I'll scan their brains while I'm at it. Or maybe not. Off to the training ground I go. I was seated against a tree in the third training ground. I planned on copying the way my mom's chakra flowed during the use of her Byakugan. I had a clone to my left in case any accidents happened. All right, let's go. I brought a small stream of chakra through my visual cortex copying the way my mother did so. I then let the chakra travel down the optic tract to the optic chasm and along the optic nerves and finally to my eyes, retina, pupil, and optical disc. My Byakugan activated. With a definite change in vision. My range had expanded more than a kilometer. I'd say it was almost six times what it was previously. Which was amazing. A manic grin covered my face. I spent a while enjoying my new range and watching the animals in the forest. Eventually, I got bored and deactivated my Byakugan. The only problem was that I couldn't slow my perception and enhance my Byakugan's range at the same time. Which wasn't much of a problem as I shouldn't need to slow my perception and have increased range. I blew a breath out of my nose and activated my Byakugan, this time keeping my chakra away from the visual cortex. 
my range was still more than it usually was, though it only clocked in at about 500 meters, two and a half times my normal range. I think the visual cortex does most of the heavy lifting. When I copied the way my mom's chakra flowed, my range increased by about six times what it normally was. So, mom's natural range should be five kilometers divided by six. So, her natural range is 833-ish meters, which was more in line with what most Hyuga had. What a find, I might not even bother trying to mess with the optical nerve. I was fine with my natural range, and perhaps my optical nerves would increase in size with the Akugan usage. But now this needed a name. The Akugan no Kyoka. Nope, not happening. It's still just called the Byakugan. I think it's still worthwhile to read more about the eyes. I stood up, dispersed my clone, and shunshined back to my house. Three days passed. My mom continued practicing the Raisingan and I learned a lot about eyes. Mom was now on the third part of Raisingan training, and I was pondering changing the color of my eyes. Your eye color depended on the amount of pigment your iris had. The less pigment, the lighter the shade your eyes were. And the more pigment you had, the darker your eye shade was. The iris was just a muscle that controlled the size of the pupil, so I could afford to mess with it. My eyes were currently a pinkish white. So perhaps I should make my eyes less Hugo like. Three more days passed, making it a week since we got home from our mission. My iris was now purple while my pupil remained a light pink. I also sported some gray highlights in my hair, which was just more simple pigment change. I now look nothing like a Hugo. Not that I look much like a Hugo, to begin with. The bulging veins were the only way to tell I was using the Byakugan. It wasn't quite what I hoped for, but it's now what I've got. My mom was quite upset that I experimented with my hair and eyes. No assurances wouldn't quell her motherly wrath and she had made me come with her everywhere she went to ensure I wouldn't get up to any shenanigans. This led to me sitting in the third training ground and watching my mom's progress with the Raisingan with a bored look on my face. I sighed. I was tired of watching my mom make the Raisin Gan wrong. Activate your Byakugan and watch how I do it. I held my palm up and created a Raisin Gan. I looked over at my mother. She didn't seem to get it. I drilled my Raisin Gan into the ground and let it disperse. I held my hand out palm up. Rotation. I gathered chakra on my palm and started to spin it in multiple directions. Power. I increased the volume and density of the chakra on my palm but still kept it spinning. Containment I created a shell around the spinning mass of chakra. I drilled the now done raisin gan into the ground and let it disperse. Okay, I got it. Lies I watched her fail to create another raisin gan. Sigh We were headed out to eat after a semi-successful day of raisin gan practice. Mom was nearly there, the shell of chakra around her raisin gan was thin and unstable, but with a day or two of practice she'd be done. Can we get a mission in or around another shinobi village? I wanted to steal some jutsu. Why? Honesty or bullshit? I want to steal some of their jutsu with my Byakugan. Honesty. She hummed but didn't answer the question. Oh, yeah. I'm currently being punished. We arrived at mom's place of choice. It's your Raku ramen. I dully looked at Kushina as she devoured bowl after bowl of ramen with relish. I side-eyed my mom, hoping she would make the smart decision and find a different place to eat. I wasn't in the mood to be smothered. It wasn't to be. Kushina. Mom approached Kushina with a dimpled smile and hugged her. Kushina didn't return the greeting as she was still too busy eating. I stood and stared with knitted brows, wondering when they became such good friends. I looked to Kushina's left and saw Makoto was watching the proceedings with a raised eyebrow. I decided to stay out Kushina's reach so I headed over to Makoto's left. Hello Makoto-sama, it's been a while. I took the seat without asking, I didn't want to risk being refused. Hello Shiro, you look different. 
she remembered my name, how nice. I sent her a nod of acknowledgement and looked past her. Mom and Kushina were side by side and enjoying their meals with smiles on their faces. I blinked. All right then. I focused back on Makoto. I used medical ninjutsu to change the color of my hair and eyes. She probably could have guessed that or come to conclusions, but for the sake of politeness I started making small talk. Oh, was it hard? Not really? Yes, it was, it took a long time. That was a filthy lie, but I had no interest in wasting my time changing people's hair and eye color. Topic change no jutsu. So, Mikoto-sama, what have you been up to? She reached over and gave me some head pats. Just call me Makoto. She ignored my question. All right. I looked around wondering how I ordered. Can you order something for me, Makoto? She nodded. One miso ramen with crispy pork, please. I guess you just yell what you want. I sat and slowly ate my ramen. I was using my food as a shield against conversation. Makoto, Kushina, and Mom seemed to be having a blast. Chatting, laughing, and having a grand old time. Which didn't bode well for my future peace at home. I took a bite of pork. Hopefully no unexpected home invasions happened. I side-eyed the group. I think this was my time to disappear. I mumbled something about going to the bathroom and made a hasty exit. I sent the ladies one last look before I shunshined home. Interlude I felt Shiro's chakra disappear out of my range. I hope he didn't think he was being sneaky. Shiro left. I looked at Kushina and admired her beautiful hair. It's a shame she's not into women. Thanks, Kushina, I didn't notice. I looked past Kushina. My first impression of Makoto was that she was a very gentle and kind woman. She was also attractive, though I don't think I could bet an Uchiha. They're known to be crazy after all. So, what have Minato and Kakashi gotten up to? I started a conversation hoping to get my mind out of the gutter. Oh, they've been doing missions non-stop, I rarely see them. That's probably for the best, from what I heard they aren't great company. Kushina threw a question back at me. What's Shiro been up to? He's been experimenting on his eyes and putting his future at risk. He created his own jutsu and also changed the color of his hair and eyes. Kushina smiled. Oh! What's it called? And what's it do? I saw Makoto perk up as well. I don't think Shiro would mind if I show them. Watch. I held my hand out, palm up. Rotation. I gathered chakra on my palm and started to spin it in multiple directions. Power. I increased the volume and density of the chakra on my palm. Containment. I created a shell around the chakra. Kushina and Makoto stared at the spinning mass of chakra. The shell was a little thin and misshapen, but I was close to completing it. Shiro calls it Heaven's Palm. I let go of my control and the mass of chakra dispersed kicking up a small wind. I'm not good at it yet. But I will be soon. Wow! That's amazing! Kushina wrapped her arms around me and spun me around taking me off my seat. Kushina stopped spinning and I was now looking at Makoto over her shoulder. That's extremely impressive, you should be proud. I felt my eyes moisten. I am. I wrapped my arms around Kushina and buried my head into Kushina's shoulder. I didn't want Makoto to see me cry during our first meeting. Eventually I blinked the tears out of my eyes and left Kushina's embrace. Shiro's grown so fast. One moment he was crawling on the ceiling like a human spider, the next he's creating his own jutsu. I missed so much. I can't wait until I have my own. Kushina patted her belly. I'm not sure how I feel about kids. Makoto was stirring her ramen with her chopsticks. I wasn't sure about kids myself. I figured I wouldn't have them. But it's something you'll never regret. I know I didn't. 
regardless of how it happened. The love you feel for your children is something you can't comprehend until you have your own. That's the end of this tale for now, the fifth installment will be coming soon. Also watch out for some more fan fictions coming soon such as what if I was reincarnated as Naruto, what if Asta bonded with his devil from the beginning and what if Deku was the son of all for one. If you enjoyed like the video and subscribe to not miss other uploaded, comment your thoughts. Check out my other stories here and with that being said have a chill rest of your day in peace.